Is Animal Crossing City Folk really the worst Animal Crossing game in the series? Well, there's only one way to find out. Spending 100 days in Animal Crossing City Folk. Now here's an interesting thing with this being the third main Animal Crossing game. In the original Animal Crossing game for the GameCube, if you paid off all of your debt, you had a gold statue constructed in your likeness, which is amazing. And then in Wild World, if you paid off all your debt, you got nothing. Apparently in City Folk, you do get something for paying off all your debt, but how hard of a task will that be? Either way, we're getting to the bottom of this game and we're starting our adventure off here at the beginning on day one. Upon booting up Animal Crossing City Folk for the first time, you are met by Rover, this cat who talks to you and kind of hypes you up about your adventure you're about to embark on in Animal Crossing. He gives me the option to start fresh or move things over from the DS version of Animal Crossing with Wild World. I uh, started to have some flashbacks to our 100 Days in Animal Crossing Wild World video. Uh, yeah, let's start fresh. Okay, from here, Rover asks you the typical questions that are asked when you start up an Animal Crossing game. What's your name? Elijah, what's the name of your town? As always, I pick Kikowani. He then asks me something along the lines of if I know where my house is or where I'm gonna be living, and uh, not at all do I know. Yeah, Rover doesn't seem too impressed by this answer. Do I have money? Am I financially stable to be doing a giant life change like this? Uh, no, but we're, we're okay. Now, of course, if you're familiar with the Animal Crossing franchise, these older games would ask you these questions and it would actually dictate the way that your character would end up looking based on how you answered a lot of these questions Rover asks you. So after all of that, how do I look after this interesting bus ride with Rover going to a mysterious city? Honestly, not too bad actually. I mean, my eyes are kind of big, but it's okay. I do have these rosy cheeks for sure. I'm not really 100% sure what I'm supposed to be doing. I think I probably should be heading to like the town center or something or the civic center, but I always like to have a little bit of a look around. Right away, I met this cat with round eyes named Pearl. I decided to run around a bit to just try to get a feel for what my town that I'm going to be spending the next 100 days in kind of feels and looks like. It's kind of weirdly laid out. Like, there's this random house over by a cliff wall. Someone who lives here chose to put their house right here in front of the bridge, making it hard to access the bridge, so we know we have a bunch of geniuses living here. Seriously, who did this? I wandered around a bit more until on the south side of my town, I found the town hall and went in, and that's where I met Pelly. She seemed nice enough giving me the rundown and told me to just go out there and find a house to move into. I wish the real estate industry worked like that nowadays. There's a couple of different houses you get to choose from that are just vacant. This house is kind of close to the front of everything and there's some other houses and inside it has a rug, so I guess it'll do. After coming out of the house, that's when I met him, Tom Nook. So apparently after all of this, the house I will have to pay for obviously, and uh, the bill isn't cheap for someone who has no money. 19,000 800 bells for the house. You know, just easy pocket cash everyone has laying around. Well, I don't have the money. Uh, he offered me a job, but what if I don't want to do it? Like, what if I just don't feel like doing it, Nook? He'll actually straight up tell you to stop being selfish. All right, fine, fine. I'll work for you. Little did I know, this would be the start of one of the biggest and wildest 100-day experiences I've ever had. Things start to get really interesting when we attempt to pay our bills, and while we're at it, let's pay some real bills, too. Okay, this is one of the crazy 100 days in Animal Crossing we've ever done, but we actually have a sponsor today. Yeah, we're sponsored by Surfshark. Did you know that most internet service providers actually analyze your internet data and then limit your bandwidth based on your usage? Like, I've had it where I'm downloading a game or streaming content just to wonder, why is my internet so slow all of a sudden? Uh, yeah, that's not cool, but I'm paying for a certain expectation of speed, and that's where our sponsor for today, Surfshark, comes into play, a VPN that I've been using for years. Surfshark VPN keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of your information sent between your device to the internet. And this keeps your personal data protected, prevents ISPs from just casually watching what you're up to. And Surfshark is just great when it comes to privacy tools. For instance, I pay for Netflix, but I only have access to Netflix shows in the US. With Surfshark, I can change my geolocation and bam, I now have access to shows that Netflix has, but only in other countries. As a longtime customer, I personally really believe in Surfshark, but I also think that their pricing model is really fair and accessible. And if you use code Elijah, this is how you spell it, you get an extra three months for free free, and they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee if you aren't satisfied, plus they sponsored your favorite Animal Crossing YouTuber, so, you know, use code Elijah. There's also a link in the description down below. Let's get back into the 100 days. Okay, so we're still in day one here, and Tom Nook has us working for him. He wants us to go and meet 
everybody in the town. Since we already met Pearl, we'll just kind of skip her and go try to meet anyone else we can find. I met this turtle named Tortimer. I think he's the mayor or something, and he said he'll be watching me, whatever that means. There's this penguin named Rold, and he has a cool house with a spaceship kind of theme. I'm actually kind of jealous. Uh, he told me he wants me to give him a holler sometime. Uh, okay. Now the real question is who was the person who put their house right in front of this bridge? W what is this? Victoria? You're on my bad side already. I met Gala, who lives all the way over here for some reason. And then I met Benedict, who might be my personal favorite. I mean, he's a chicken named Benedict. How could it get any better? And then we have a mouse named Limburg, who I think I remember having this villager way back when I was a child on the GameCube version of Animal Crossing. So at least I have a familiar face. He does have a five o'clock shadow though. So he's got that going for him. After meeting everyone, I went back to Tom Nook's store because I have to actually do some work or something. Now, normally, I'll be honest, I'm against people trying to tell me what to do in an Animal Crossing game. Tom Nook's here telling me I need to wear a uniform. And while I'm against the idea of someone trying to dictate what I do and how I do things, I am a big fan of uniforms, so I did quickly put on that work uniform that he gave me. And I was kind of happy about it. Okay, he wants me to plant some flowers. That's easy enough. Then I had to plant some trees. Also easy. I needed to open this door. That surprisingly was kind of hard. Still trying to get used to the controls here. From there, I had to make a delivery for gala so that wasn't too bad she also asked me what my birthday was which i may or may not have given her my real birthday yeah i definitely gave her a fake birthday because my birthday falls outside of the 100 days also as a gift she gave me a washer uh okay we'll take a look at what this looks like later i then had to go through the process of writing a heartfelt letter to pearl because tom nook wanted me to i then had to go and deliver a carpet to benedict and benedict actually came through and gave me his old carpet so that was nice of him after that i had to make a delivery to Pearl, and as I delivered to Pearl, she showed me that letter that I had wrote to her. It's kind of surprised the mail moved that quickly, but she didn't give me a gift in return for delivering her mail, so I'm kind of upset about that. After all of this work, this slaving away at Tom Nook's new 9 to 5 job, Tom Nook had one more task for me to do. Post on the bulletin, which I did, and then I promptly was laid off from my job. He did pay $1,400 to my loan, which really is not that much considering how much I owe, but hey, we have a humble abode in this town. Look at my little house coming together. We definitely have a lot of debt, a city to go see, and we're definitely gonna have to do something about this house and pull it together. But after a long first day in Animal Crossing, we went upstairs to save our game and really begin the next 99 days we'll be spending in Animal Crossing City Folk. Day two, we have a lot to do and why is Mr. Rossetti here? I definitely saved everything correctly on day one. So what did I do wrong here? I'm actually a little bit confused here, but I want to say, is it possible that Mr. Rossetti comes in every day on day two to remind people that they have to save their game? Nonetheless, it seems like all my progress is still here from day one, so I'll just continue on without worrying about too much for now. I decided to try shaking some trees to see if I can get some early bells easily, and I actually ended up getting bees, so I ran straight to this museum, narrowly escaping. I decided to check out Tom Nook's store, see what's for sale, and I wanted to buy some of these tools, but I had no money, so that's kind of sad. Well, I guess the best way to make money quickly is to go around and shake some trees to get the fruit and sell the fruit and try to get some tools that we can then use to make a bigger profit down the road. I ended up selling the fruit and I bought a shovel and a fishing rod so you know it's a money making time now. That debt on that house isn't paying itself off. Okay fishing is kind of hard and I try to do the money rock trick where you hit a rock with a shovel very quickly and try to get as much money out of the rock as possible before it cuts you off. I'm not really good at this yet. It does take a little bit of getting used to these Wii controls. Uh, I randomly got stopped by this horse, Victoria, and she wants a catchphrase. Um, I gave her a fitting one, I thought. I decided to sell some more fruit, and later on, I found a tall umbeloid inside of this recycling bin. I think the best option here is to just try to pay down our debt as quickly as possible, since it's just the first debt, which is the smallest one we'll have in this playthrough. So I paid a tiny bit here, but tomorrow? Tomorrow's the big day. We'll dub tomorrow Operation make money day. I do want to pay off this house first and then go and explore that big city, which was a big point of this game as well. Day three, it's money making day. And right away we ran around and we found this fossil, which later will get appraised and sold. Who are you? Uh, so I met this villager who apparently moved here five minutes ago. They're apparently into short stories and carrot cake. I went to talk to Blathers about getting that fossil appraised and I guess I clicked the wrong button and ended up donating it on accident. So I'm pretty miserable about that. 
that today. Okay, let's go back to the planning stages here. We wanted to pay off the debt by the end of today. Now, we already messed up on the fossil thing, but maybe we can catch a bunch of fish and sell off that and maybe have enough to pay off our debt. And then we can go visit the city tomorrow and see what that's all about. I went immediately, tried to catch some fish. I actually caught a crawfish. Then I caught some garbage. Great. I caught some more fish and another crawfish. I sold everything I had, but it looks like we're still a little short on paying off our debt. So maybe our plans are going to get pushed back a day or so. Day four. All right, no more messing around. First things first, we get a letter in the mail from our mother. She sent us a thousand bells, which is good. That's a great way to start today. I found a fossil. This time I'll be careful not to accidentally have Blathers keep it from me. Okay, we got to find that money rock and okay, we're actually getting a little bit better at doing the money rock thing here. We might actually have just enough money to pay off our debt, but I did want to stop at Tom Nook's store and I did buy some furniture. I mean, come on, my house can't be completely bare bones the whole way through this. But nonetheless, look at us. We were able to pay off the smallest and cheapest debt all the way by the end of day four. We should feel proud of ourselves, even though we know that the debt's only going to get exponentially larger and harder to pay off from here moving forward. Still, we paid it off. We should be proud of ourselves. We're going to go ahead and reward ourselves by checking out the city tomorrow. Day five. Okay, I'll be honest. I forgot to talk to Tom Nook after I paid off my debt, so my house is still really small. Whoops, that's on me. I will have to go talk to him about that upgrade. So before we go to the city, we'll go talk to him first and sell some fruit because, you know, we need some spending money for when we're out there living at large. I also decided to finally put down that furniture that I had bought yesterday. And my house is kind of a work in progress. Also, when I was running around, I fell in this hole. I then messed up on a money rock, but at least I have a little bit of money for the city or I can choose to save some of the money if I want to put it towards our next debt, which we do actually want to try to finish paying off all of our debt in this game this time around. Wild World was very, very challenging with the way that the debt would just go up astronomically and the money making options in that game seemed somewhat limited. So we're going to be serious about this. I really want to try to get the house fully paid off in a hundred days with all of its spells and whistles and upgrades. Also, because I'm definitely not being responsible with my money, I did buy this flamingo and I bought a net because I think catching bugs might be a good way to make some money as well. Anyways, to the city. I'm so excited. Uh, first thing I did when I got there is I went to this auction house that I'm pretty sure I'm never going to use again. Oh, wow. This is Gracie Grace, a store that apparently sells things that are way too expensive, but uh, maybe later on we'll have the money to actually afford something in here. I see Lyle over here, and last time I talked to him was in Wild World, and he would just immediately charge me some insurance money. It was a scam, so I'm I'm running away. I'm not going to talk to him. There's actually a lot going on in this city. There's a barber. Uh, is that Kix? A fortune teller. There's a movie theater. There's actually a lot to do here, so I think we'll start coming here more frequently, but for now, let's go ahead and head back. I didn't end up spending any money here, but at least we have Mr. Flamingo and he looks good in the house. Tomorrow we'll get a bigger house and a brand new debt to go with it and maybe some new things to look at. Okay, now we're going on to day six. Tom Nook wants 120,000 bells for these renovations? That's so much more than what the initial investment was just to buy the house? <sighs> All right, well, I bought this tree, so, you know, we can run around our house and see how much room we have now. All right, we're gonna have to be really frugal and just try to make as much money as possible. I caught this honeybee. What on earth? is this? Okay, so this is apparently Francine. Hello, nice to meet you too. I don't know, I've seen this villager before in other games, but there's something really weird about the way she looks specifically in City Folk. I did find the money rock though, which was good, and I found a fossil. Since yesterday I didn't spend too much money in the city, we could get the fossil appraised and sold and make the first payment on our house. I'll be honest though, since this game started, I have kind of wanted to get a haircut, so uh, maybe we'll head to the city soon, but we should probably save a little bit of money extra for paying for little things like that. Day seven, we've been at this for a week already, but we still have 93 more days to go. I found the money rock right away this time, which was nice. And so I decided let's go to the city and finish this first week off in style. After that, we'll go and hit the money making process really hard. I found the barber shop and I went in and it looks like it's Shampoodle where we see Harriet before her hippie days in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Do I want a hairstyle or a makeover? I don't know what that means. Okay, and full makeover is for a me skin, which I think I remember looking terrifying back in the day. So please, no, let's not do that. We'll just do a regular haircut. 3,000 bells can't be that bad. What are these options for my haircut? Uh, not cute. I, I don't trust crazy. So this one? Big brother or business? What on earth does this mean in regards to getting a haircut? Do I prefer giving love or receiving love? Uh, okay, so apparently 
apparently I picked a big brother who yearns for love and justice and she has the perfect look just for that. Do I want something warm or cool? Uh, cool? Uh, what are all these options? Just tell me the colors. Don't make this a mystery. I mean, I guess I came to get a fresh cut. Well, here goes nothing. Oh my God. What? Someone please explain to me how this is a big brother that wants to be love and fresh, whatever that means, and why is it this? Well, I feel like we maybe wasted 3,000 bells today. Let's just head back and, you know, lick our wounds and get back on the money grind tomorrow. Day eight, we need to focus up on paying off our debt, but we might have gotten a little distracted today. First things first, money rock didn't go that well. I did pick up quite a bit of pears though, and I sold them. I also bought this chair thing. Apparently, I could do a delivery for Benedict. I just had to go find Rold. Rold took forever to find, but when I finally did give it to him, Rold didn't give me anything in return for delivering his thing. I kind of feel scammed, like I just did this for free. Apparently, Limburg lost his keys, and honestly, I'm just too uninterested to actually try to help him find his keys. Tammy, on the other hand, told me this huge, long story, and I'm starting to wonder if these villagers exist as just a bigger distraction from the bigger goals at hand. I did at least sell some more pairs, which was good. Day nine, I wanted to make money, and I was gonna go big or go home. I looked for the money rock and couldn't get too much luck right away with that. I did run around and pick up some weeds, which surprisingly was a lot of work. I found some stuff buried though along the way, which was kind of nice. Ooh, a coconut here. This could be big. Let's go ahead and plant it because if you plant these over by the beaches, these coconuts are actually worth a little bit more than pears are. And that could be a good way to make a little bit of money. Maybe some potential here. I finally found the money rock and oh yeah, I hit it big this time. Let's go see if we can get any closer to paying out some of our debt. Since we did dig up quite a bit of things today, I got these fossils assessed and then sold those. And after all of this, I was able to make a payment just under 30,000 bells, which means I have literally over 80,000 bells still to go. But hey, it's at least a start. Going on to day 10, we needed a strategy for getting the 80k we need to pay off our debt. If anything, today's Monday. I want to pay off this debt before Sunday, which is on day 21, and save money so whatever I buy from Joe the lady who sells turnips, I could potentially make a big profit and start to make some big game money. That's a lot of things though to get done in just a couple of days, but maybe if we work really hard, we can pull some stuff off here. For most of today, I picked up anything I could find and sold it. I found a fossil and did quite well with the money rock. So that was looking good. I was gonna go and sell some of the things I collected, but Tom Nook is remodeling. So uh, that was kind of fast. Not much I can do here. His store's closed. So we'll just have to come and sell everything tomorrow. Next, we're going on to day 11 and we have this brand new shop which is kind of exciting but we still have to stay focused we got bills to pay i did get the money rock right away which was nice and i wanted to go and look at the store finally to just kind of take a peek on what's going on in there we're not spending any unnecessary money we're just window shopping at what's for sale in this new store okay i might have bought this table for 1800 bells we will make that money back and then some i promise i caught a long locust then i caught this honeybee i caught a frog which is really exciting i had these fossils that i had sitting in my inventory evaluated and then sold everything and I ended today with a little over 20,000 bells so I was responsible and made a payment leaving us with 56,000 bells left in our debt which is still kind of a lot. Day 12 money rock right away was really nice to see and we actually had some success shaking some trees. Oh Tammy wants to move away. It's only been 12 days what's going on? I told her not to go but she said she would have to think about it I guess. I don't really know what that means. I sold some stuff at Tom Nook store, but I also did buy this slingshot just in case we see some balloons flying through the air. What is this? I found this empty lamp. I don't really know what this does. I guess I'm gonna hold on to it for a while though. I shook some more trees and I ended up getting a hive of bees. I did try to catch them with a net, but I was kind of too slow. I pressed every wrong button under the sun in the process. Okay, selling pears to make money is such a slow grind here. I mean, I did a lot of runs and I only made 15,000 bells today. That still leaves us with a little over 40,000 bells left in debt, which, ouch. I found some furniture in the trash, which was interesting, but there was nothing I really needed. And I got this duplicate table, so I sold that as well, just to get a little bit of money as well. Day 13. I'm pretty sure, by the way, after we pay off this debt, we're gonna have bigger debts a couple of more times. So we are gonna have to become more efficient with how we're making money if we're gonna manage to try to actually pay off everything. I started things off, I got the money rock, and I shot down a balloon, which gave me a check 
chess piece, which I don't really want to put up on display in my house. So I will sell that to try to make some money. I did dig up a fossil and I did a lot of fishing to try to make some extra money on the side. The coconuts came in, so I actually want to go ahead and plant two more trees just so we have, you know, another resource that we can sell and make bells off of. When I was walking around randomly, Gala offered me a shaved ice maker if I gave her my zebra turkey fish. Uh, hello, yes, I love snow cones. After selling everything I wanted to sell, I made about 12,000 bells, which means I still owe 28k. It's gonna be a close one here, paying off the debt and then trying to make money to play the turn up game on Sunday, but we'll just try the best we can. Okay, so for context, it's now day 14 and it's Friday. Turn up day is Sunday, so we are getting down to the wire. Uh, Pascal is randomly here. He told me something about used clothes being easier to clean and then he just jumped off into the river and yeeted himself away. I have no idea what's going on here. I ran into Tammy, who's still here, but she's thinking about moving still. I said no again, and especially said no this time because I'm starting to feel like there's oddly a high number of horses living here and I just feel like they're plotting something and I kind of feel like I need someone I can trust. I dug up this mole cricket and chased it around but lost it and then I found the money rock. Okay, we need to just like fish a ton and try to make some bells here. I did so. I was catching left, right, and sideways, and I sold for like a grand total of 2,200 bells. Wow, that's that's not that good. I still owe 15,000 bells, and tomorrow is technically our last day for our goal, so we need to make enough for our mortgage, and then maybe make a little bit extra so we actually have a chance to buy some turnips come Sunday morning. Now, we will have the morning of Sunday to attempt a quick money rock, but we will be cutting it close, so we really have to try to use our time wisely, especially in these next two days. Now we're on to day 15, the Saturday before turnips. Okay, money rock. We gotta get to do this right. Okay, and we actually did good here. We're doing anything we can to get bells here. I actually caught a spider, which was a new one for me. I did find a fossil and then a gyroid right next to each other, which was interesting. I sold everything, had 6,000 bells, which is short, but just barely. And with the money I got from the money rock, we should have just enough. No, we're 48 bells short on our debt. Uh, we decided to go and shake a tree for a hundred bells and I got stung by a bunch of bees. Dang. I did eventually find the money I needed and I did it. I paid off that debt all before Sunday like we had hoped and I went and talked to Tom Nook who wants to expand my house once again. Eh, why not? Let's just keep the ball moving here. Okay, now that our debt is paid off, there's a lot of things I feel like we need to catch up on. Things we've been slacking on. First of all, I'm wearing the same clothes. Also, we need to head back to the city. There's a lot of stuff I want to do. I went and I bought this yellow shirt from the Able Sisters now. I bought this hat so I can cover up this terrifying haircut that I have at least for now until I can get to another haircut session. I do have to say, I have a feeling our debt's gonna really be up there and we're gonna have to try our best with turnips now moving forward if we're gonna pay this off in time. The time it took for us to get just enough to pay off this second debt was way too long in my opinion. And if we're gonna be able to clear everything, we need to get more aggressive with how we're earning. But we do have one thing still in our back pocket and that's the turnip market. I don't feel like I have that many bells ready to go for the turnip game tomorrow, but we do have the morning to make some bells that we could put into the turnip game for our first week. So we'll hope for the best with that and just play it by ear and see how it goes. Okay, it is day 16 and this is a big day for this run. We now have 84 days left to pay off all of our debt and we found the money rock right away today, which is great news. But we did get some bad news. When we talked to Tom Nook, he wants 248,000 bells to pay off the renovation that we just had. That is so much more than what we just paid off. I mean, sure, the house is substantially bigger, which is kind of nice. But like I said, we are gonna have to play this very, very aggressively with our money if we're even gonna have a chance at paying this all off. Fortunately, Joan is here and she's the one that sells the white turnips. If you've never done turnip selling before, it's pretty simple. I mean, kind of. Joan will sell you turnips on Sunday and then you have from Monday to Saturday to pick a day to sell them to Tom Nook. However, Tom Nook's buying price of turnips fluctuates on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes he's only buying them for a small fraction of the price that you originally bought them at, and other times he's buying them for more. So you can actually get a profit if you sell at the right time. However, if you don't sell your turnips by Sunday, they spoil and you lose your entire investment. Now this week, Joan is selling turnips in bundles of 10 at 103 bells each. Emptying out the money that I did have, I decided to buy 90 turnips at 103 bells. There's one more way we can make money 
talking to Joan that isn't as commonplace because this feature was removed from later Animal Crossing games. In these games, Joan also sells a special red turnip, and this one works a little bit differently. Essentially, if you buy a red turnip, you can plant it, and if you water it every day for seven days, you'll have a big turnip that sells for quite a big amount of money. Now, the only downside is if you miss a day watering your turnip, it's gone. It withers away and you've lost your investment. Now, the buy-in is a thousand bells, which isn't too bad. So we are going to buy a red turnip as well, but we will need to get a watering can, which we don't have yet. And looking at Tom Nook's store, there's not one for sale yet. So we're going to wait to plant it until we actually have that watering can. Okay, all that said and done, we have a little investment going here. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but hey, you need a little bit of money to make some money and then we can use that money to make more money, hopefully. Now, we kind of have to play a little bit of a waiting game for Tom Nook to sell turnips at the right price. So maybe it's time we make a trip to the city and relax a little bit and not get too stressed out with all the financials where things fall apart like with what happened in Animal Crossing Wild World. If you haven't watched that video, just know it was like a little existential crisis in the middle there. Okay, now we're sitting on these turnips, so we have to make sure we sell them at a good price. Right away, day 17, Money Rock was not too hard to find. It was nice to get a little bit of spending money if we do want to use this in the city. Tom Nook is buying turnips today at 80 bells a turnip. We bought them at 90, so this would be a negative if we chose to sell today, but we just won't. We'll hold on and try to get a good price. I did pick up a watering can, so we can go ahead and plant that red seed, which I planted over by my house, so I'll remember to water it every day. Okay, when I was at Nook's store, though, I thought I saw a couch for sale. Yes. Okay, we still have a little bit of money. Let's go ahead and head to the city, because I think it's time we get a haircut. All right, real quick question, guys. What do you do if your bus driver asks you this? Say, there ye cuttlefish, ye look mighty good young, but yet living on your own in town, you're, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. It was time to get a haircut. I, uh, tried to answer things a little bit differently. Something about a rock star and I said some warm colors or something. And, uh, I guess I kind of look like a radish now. I mean, it's not as bad as it was before, but come on. I can't get too much luck with these haircuts. Can I? I decided to go ahead and go home, but we will come back tomorrow and try to do some more stuff in the city and kind of catch up on some of the city life stuff we haven't done yet. Also, I put that couch down in my house. It looks pretty good. Day 18, I got to say I'm getting really good at doing the whole money rock thing. I remembered to plant the red seed today. Turnips are at 67 bells. Great. What is this? Tom Nook is selling a silver slingshot. Uh, sure, I'll buy this. Oh, it shoots two of the little pellets at a time. Well, nonetheless, let's go ahead and go to the city today. What on earth? is this thing? Like, what's going on with his face? He does talk about getting his shoes shined, so maybe I should go do that too. It's always nice to catch up with Kick when we get a chance. Okay, I think it's time we finally go and check out what's going on at that marquee. It looks like they have a special show for newcomers, which is perfect because I'm a newcomer. Okay, so it's just like this short introduction thing, but it gives me an emotion you can use. So that's cool, but man, these jokes weren't good. Uh, today was an interesting day. We did get to try out the emotion before we went to bed though. Day 19, this day started off with a letter from Tammy saying that she chose to move away after all. After all of that persuasion I tried to do to get her to stay, she still ended up moving. This is the most terrifying gnome that I have ever seen for sale. I guess I'm gonna buy it. Wait, 3,000 bells? Okay, never mind. I'm not gonna buy it. Okay, turnips are down to 59 bells, and I'm kind of freaking out here. Um, what do we do? These prices don't seem to be going up. Okay, the red turnip is watered, and the money rock is acquired for today. Also, also, I thought it'd be a good idea to maybe change up my shirt. So I went to the Able Sisters and got this shirt instead. Day 20, we got the money rock right away. I also bought a new wallpaper and rug because we got to be style in our house while we're at it. Okay, turnips are up to 83. So hopefully it's trending upwards, but we're still nowhere near making a return on our investment. Okay, I sold a few more items to make some pocket space. And at this point, I've accrued like $23,000 in money rocks, but we haven't hit big with the turnips just yet. I also went and put up that new rug and wallpaper and I think it looks pretty good. Okay, day 21. I'm keeping up with my red turnip pretty well. I might not mention it every single day, but in general, I'm pretty good at remembering to water this thing. We also hit the money rock well. This desk for sale at Tom Nook's store is actually kind of nice. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see how the turnips are doing and 212? Uh, yes, please. We will sell immediately. That's like 19,000 bells right there. Okay, we now have a little sum 
sum of money and normally I would immediately go and pay down the debt but you know what that was the old rocket Elijah the couldn't pay off my debt in a hundred days wild world rocket Elijah listen if I've learned anything it takes money to make money and we need to accrue wealth at any cost at any risk so instead of paying 48,000 bells we are going to try to keep earning and then reinvest everything that we have into the turnip game yes this is going to be the riskiest strategy we've ever done in an 100 days video but we got to try this time we can't have a repeat of what happened in wild world i mean don't get me wrong wild world was fun but we didn't get all of the house upgrades and i mean wild world was kind of obnoxious with that but still we got to make things different here so day 22 we watered our turn up we money rocked we had a fossil in my inventory so i got that evaluated and sold that too it was worth over 5,000 bells so we're gonna go all in on the turn up game tomorrow making this one of the riskiest playthroughs ever but hey at least we're staying committed okay day 23 turn up day flea markets today also i think at this point by the way i've managed to memorize all of my rock locations like there's one by my house here there's one down here by town hall one's by the river then there's two by the shops and then one just a little bit further down so yeah look at me memorizing where all my rocks are i did almost mess up my money rock but somehow i managed to save it okay we need to find jones so we can throw all of our money at her and hope to get a good turnip price this week but i did find a present while looking for her flying through the air and i shot it down it's a mushroom mural hmm oh great now Benedict's wanting to move. I don't want him to move, but he says he doesn't know if he can get out of it. That sounds kind of scary. It sounds like he almost has to move away. What's going on with him? Is he okay? While also looking for Joan, I did manage to find some more fossils. This caused me to run into some pocket space problems when I did finally find Joan. So I had to go to the museum, get my fossils evaluated, and then sell those off. But it gave us more money to buy even more turnips. I also did get a red turnip seed again and remembered to plant it on time this time. I then decided to head to the house to drop off my turnips so I could have more pocket space to maybe buy some more turnips. And then, of course, Gala showed up because it's apparently flea market day. Uh-oh. So Gala and I went into some heated negotiations over some of the stuff in my house. I ended up selling her my washing machine I got day one for 2,000 bells. I also decided to go check out some of the other houses just to see what was for sale. Uh, Pearl has a lot of interesting things going on here. Uh, I felt like I had to rescue this bird from Pearl's house since she's a cat, so I paid top dollar for that. And then I also felt like I had to rescue this chair while I was at it. Well, we're all loaded up on turnips now, so we just have to hope for a good turnip price this week. Day 24. I dug up this red turnip from before, and I hope it sells well. Rhonda the Rhino decided to move into my town. I really don't know how I feel about the back of her clothes that she's wearing. It just feels kind of off. I did find the money rock, and I caught a flea off of Limburg. Okay, this red turnip is worth 16,000 bells. That's actually a pretty amazing turnaround. Now, turnips are only 75 bells a turnip and I bought at 102. That's not really a good number just yet, but I'm not going to worry too much because I think Mondays typically lean a little bit lower than any other day of the week. Day 25, I got the money rock. Oh no, Nook's store is closing tomorrow. Okay, this sounds like a good thing, right? Yeah, we're going to get a brand new Nook store that's even bigger than before. But when it comes to turnips, this is not good because his store will be closed for an entire day, meaning there will be one less day for me to potentially sell my turnips. And who knows, maybe that one day is the day that the price could have spiked during the week. This leaves us with a higher risk with our turnip investment this week. I'm not liking this. To make matters worse, he is only buying for 65 bells a turnip, which is still pretty low today. I decided to try to distract myself from the impending doom of our financial situation and headed down to the city. Okay, I can finally change this awful haircut. Okay, now we gotta make sure we do this correctly with the questions and we're just gonna do the best we can navigating these, but okay, okay. Okay, my hairstyle isn't absolutely awful this time around for once. We might maybe keep it for a bit. I mean, I think it's actually a little bit of a mullet now that I look at it some more, but oh well. While we were here, we got our shoes shined from Kick, and I went to the theater again and picked the Heartbreak Show. I guess I'll get a new emotion to get to try out. Look at that. Day 26, there's not really much to do today. We kept up with our turnips and our money rocks, and we went to the Able Sisters, and this wig that they have for sale looks even worse than anything I've had. I did buy this cool light shirt though. With Nook store closed, there's not really much we can do. We only have three days left to sell all of our turnips, so I'm getting pretty nervous. Day 27. Wait, it's my birthday? Oh yeah, I forgot at the beginning I set my birthday to a random day within the 100 days because my real birthday is in December. Well, that's kind of nice. I got a letter with 5,000 bells in it from my mom. Turnip prices are down to 49 bells though, so that's terrible. Okay, day 28, I realized that that really cool shirt I bought, I never put it on. <laughs> 
I just bought it and forgot about it. I watered my turnip. I did the money rock right away. Turnip prices are down to 40 bells, which is very, very bad. It seems like they are trending downwards and there's not a high likelihood it'll climb back up. I mean, there's a chance it could spike, but it's very unlikely. Well, at least we made a lot of money this week, not in the turnip game, just earning along the way, but this is pretty heartbreaking. I guess at this point, we'll wait tomorrow to see if there's a chance that the turnips will spike, but tomorrow's the last day before the turnips spoil altogether, so we're forced just to take whatever price Tom Nook's offering. Day 29, the day of reckoning is here. For better or worse, we have decent money saved up so we can try turnips again on Sunday, but we have to at least sell whatever the turnips we have in our inventory still. Otherwise, they'll spoil and there's nothing we can do. We headed over to Tom Nook's store to see if maybe there's a chance that the price spikes, but I'm not feeling too optimistic. Well, here we go. They sell at 30 bells a turnip. This is pretty much the worst case scenario. This is such a low price for a turnip buyback and we don't have any options. We have to sell today. So I sold my 85,000 bells worth of turnips that I had acquired and got 23,000 bells back. That is not fun. Even with all of the money that we earned this week in between trying to sell the turnips, I still have less money than when I first bought the turnips. So, what did we learn? Nothing, because we are going to invest everything again and keep buying again and we'll keep trying again because we need to try to make the big money. Actually, I have some money making plans we can try to use tomorrow. Maybe we'll make a quick buck before we try to buy turnips again so we can try to level out how much we've lost already. We can only hope that things go smoother here. Day 30, rise and shine, a new day, fresh start, turnip grind. We did the money rock, we sold a red turnip, that gave us a little bit of money right away. We looked for Joan, we couldn't find her as usual. I shot this present down and it was a brick? I don't know what that means. I bought a chair at Tom Nook's store, which I thought was nice. And I also found some fossils, which are good because we can make a quick buck again. After all of that, by the time I did finally find Joan, we had over 100,000 bells in our wallet. The red turnips and the rocks definitely help making some quick money in the mornings. Now Joan's selling right in the middle of what she normally offers at 100 bells per turnip. So what that means is we're gonna have another risky week ahead of us, hoping that we can make a profit after losing so much this last week. I could try saving some money, but but I decided, you know what? We're going all in. We're hoping for the best. And um, I also bought the red turnip and planted that again because the 16K guaranteed every week's nice. Day 31, I put some of that new furniture down. That brick I got yesterday was actually pretty cool. It's like a Mario themed thing. Pascal showed up and gave me some life advice, I guess. I did the money rock. I got a fossil and went to have it evaluated so I could sell it. I decided to stop by the roost for the first time and maybe enjoy some coffee. He's not really a chatty fellow though, is he? I did check with Nook and low prices as always for a Monday, so we're not going to try to sweat it too much. Day 32. Looks like fireflies are out, which is actually kind of cool. I'll catch a couple of them, but in general, I just like the way that they look atmospherically. We found the money rock and turnips are at 86 bells right now, which is up a little bit, but still down down from what we bought at. We then headed down to the city and decided to stop by the fortune teller, Katrina, cause why not? Okay, wait, what is going on here? I, I, what, wait, what? Did I just get assaulted by Katrina? Uh, she told me I needed someone to plant three trees in my town and that'll only give them good luck. And since the Nintendo Wi-Fi services are long gone on the Nintendo Wii, uh, rest in peace that. Day 33, turnips are slowly going up. We're at 103 right now, which is nice, but honestly, we would just be barely breaking a profit. I know it's the safer option to go ahead and sell everything and just make the tiniest profit back, but I think we can risk it a little bit more and hold out in case the price is going up. Okay, I did mess up the money rock. Uh, I tried to make it up by selling fossils and fireflies though. I will be honest, these fireflies can be such a pain to catch sometimes. On day 34, I don't know if I'm just losing my edge, but I messed up on the money rock again. Turn up is 106 bells a turn up now and still going. We didn't come all this way though just to barely break even with a small profit. I'm really optimistic that this is just like an upward trend this week and if we wait another day or two, the price will be kind of in that good area where we can make a larger percent back. Maybe I'm being too greedy, I don't know. Also, I decided we need to get a new haircut because you know, we're doing all business now. We are money making. Um, I thought I answered the questions correctly. What in tarnation is this? Um, okay, well, let's be 
real. We've had worse hair before, but uh, this is something else. Wait, who is this guy? I don't know if I've ever seen him before in one of these playthroughs. Wait, he's gonna give me a free balloon? Okay, this day just got so much better, and honestly, running around with this balloon, I love it. I don't know why I'm so thrilled to have this thing. Okay, day 35. Only two days left to sell. We are down to the wire. We did the money rock today. We had some fossils evaluated. Now it's time to check the turnip price, and it plummeted in price. How unlucky do we have to be? Well, we'll have to see what's happening tomorrow. Uh, I kind of have a bad feeling, but I definitely don't want to sell while the price is like this. I do, however, have somewhat of a backup plan if need be, but we'll have to wait and see. Day 36. The moment of truth here. The money rock was easy to find. I am terrified to check the turnips, but we'll go and do it. And they are even worse than yesterday. Down to 51 bells. Well, this is awful. We don't have a choice. Once again, we're on a Saturday, so we can't hold out anymore. We literally have to sell today. So that's two strikeouts in a row. But you know what? We're not going to be discouraged. That's only two strikeouts. We haven't had three yet. At the very least, we did make some of our money back. We started with 110,000 bells, and we only made about 55,000 back which obviously is like literally getting halved. We did make some good money this week and we have about 108,000 bells in our pockets. By tomorrow morning after we sell our turn up and we hit the money rock, we should have a little more money than what we started last week with. So at least it's a little bit of progress. So at the very least, uh, progress is progress. Also one more thing we still have up our sleeve. We do have this mysterious lamp that we had found earlier on. Maybe we can try to figure out something with this before it's turn up time. Day 37, we never really investigated this mysterious lamp too much after we had found it. I don't know what's gonna happen. Is it gonna be a genie in a bottle? Is Christina Aguilera gonna pop up? I don't know. Today I dug up the red turnip. Nook is doing a point special. I forgot all about the point system that he has, but he has five time points on purchases. I sold the red turnip for 16,000 bells though, and I am gonna send a little bit of my money buying some things here just because of the five time point system Nook has going on. I don't really know what that fully means, but let's just buy a couple of things. We'll have to make up some of the money, but it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, there's also this Holly Bonsai. Uh, that's mine. Also, I spent like 6,000 bells on stuff, but we do have this plan though. I don't know. This genie bottle doesn't seem to be doing anything sitting here. Uh, selling it surprisingly is not allowed. Like, he'll just take it for free, but he won't give you money. Uh, maybe we have to keep it in our pockets for a while for something to happen. I feel like that's probably right. Also, with the whole Nook point things, I apparently have 449 points, whatever that means, but apparently I need 10 times the points I have now to get from bronze rank to silver, so I don't even know what that means. I can't even see what the rewards are, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I did money rock and then went around trying to catch all sorts of things to make a few thousand bells to make up for some of the stuff we bought at Tom Nook's store earlier today. I ended up making about 5,000 bells and selling things, which puts us up to 133,000 bells in total. And now for the moment of truth, we're gonna go ahead and buy from Joan, where we spent 113,000 bells every sent we have once again on turnips because we're gonna go in all in again this week. Day 38, a new adventure awaits with hopefully a magical turnip price that could show up. Also, Nook sent me a bronze Nook point prize, which is Nook's cranny in the mail. Thanks. I got the money rock, no problem. And turnips are at 72 bells a turnip. I sold my fossils and I decided to go and get some coffee and drink it. Also, Phyllis is here. Uh, she doesn't seem too interested in talking to me though. Day 39, another rainy night. We hit the money rock and turnips are at 112. Oh man, it is a profit, but it is small and it's only Tuesday. I don't know if I should sell and take the small profit or wait it out to see if the price goes back up. We've had a lot of bad luck lately. I, I don't think I'm gonna sell. Ooh, this might bite me later on. Okay, day 40. It's not raining tonight, surprisingly, and I'm getting pretty good at catching some of these bugs. Look, I caught a centipede and I caught a firefly and I went and sold my bugs and fossils. I uh, went and checked to the turnip price and it's 141. It's actually going up. Now, do we wait and hold out to see if it goes up higher or do we sell at a price about 41 bells higher than what we originally bought them at per turnip? Okay, okay, you know what? We're gonna be responsible and actually sell while the price is good for once. We ended up selling all of our turnips. We have about 70,000 bells on us and we invested everything we had had. And now after we get our investment back at the higher price, plus the 70K bells we have, we have a total of 219,000 bells. Oh my goodness. We could actually pay off 
our debt. But the more I think about it, if anything, with how much we lost in the last two weeks, we're actually just barely positive. So at least we made up the ground that we lost, but we're not really super in the green yet. We could pay off our debt and think about those options. And we could also have another couple of rolls on turnips week to week if we wanted to, if we chose holding off on paying off a debt right now. Oh, this is hard. But I, you know what? One day I want to be able to shop at Gracie Grace's and we can't do that if we don't have money. So we're going to go ahead and not pay off our debt and hold on to this money so we can reinvest it again. Day 41, I actually didn't get on till really late at night. It was probably because I knew that I would just made a lot of money the day before. I, of course, watered my red turnip and then decided to go run around and look for my money rock. Unfortunately, the store is closed at this hour. But hey, you know, nighttime is kind of peaceful in this game. What? What is that? Okay, I didn't even know tarantulas were in City Folk. Have I been wrong about this this entire time? I tried to catch it, but missed and end up getting bit or stung by the tarantula, which was kind of sad. I did eventually find the money rock though and did some weeding to clean some parts of my town up. And I dug a few things up that I'll try to sell tomorrow. Out of boardroom, I did stop at the museum and went up to the constellation room. I tried to make the stars say hi, but I, I don't know if it actually worked well. Day 42, my pockets were full, so I decided to go and sell, and I ended up making 11,000 bells, which is pretty good. I did buy this plant. Victoria ended up saying that she wanted to move away, and since I haven't had too much luck getting villagers to stay, you know what? I just told her good luck. Oh boy, was that not the right answer. She was not happy with me. I put this plant in my house, and I do have to say my house is starting to feel a little bit cramped. It'd be nice to have a bigger house, but no, we gotta be focused on the real task at hand here. We are making money or dying trying. I didn't choose this life, it chose me. We hit the money rock. I didn't see the prices yesterday because we had already sold, but it uh, plummeted since then. So it looks like we made a good call selling those turnips. Day 43, it's the Saturday before we get to buy more turnips. Uh, we have a decent amount of money going into tomorrow. We have our red turnip. We'll have money rocks today and tomorrow morning. You know, I've been carrying this genie lamp around for a while and it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Uh, I decided to finally look into this and apparently you need to carry it at night, but maybe I'm thinking it's only the night that you find it. So I don't know what's going on. Also, I put this other plant that I bought on display. Oh, is today Saturday night? Uh, KK a slider should actually be here. You know what? We could use some good luck before we go into the whole turn up craze once again. So let's go ahead and head to the roost and see what's going on. KK called me daddy-o. Man, you know, KK's so cool. He performed KK swing and that concluded this night. Day 44, let's go. We got a letter from my dad. That's a rare sight in Animal Crossing. I thought he left to join the circus or get milk or he became a rabbit or something. I did dig up my red turnip to sell and I hit the money rock right away. It's kind of an eerie, foggy morning and I feel like we're on this like super important mission today. I sold the red turnip so we got some more money. Nook does have a cool dresser that I kind of had to buy. Uh, okay. So Joan is selling at 107 bells a turnip, which is kind of high, but we are the wolf on Wall Street and we're going to profit. Uh, I ended up having to do three trips just to buy about 280,000 bells worth of turnips. I also found some fossils and got an extra 8,000 bells selling those and I use those also on turnips. So we're about 288,000 turnips in right now. And then I went and dug some stuff up and got some more fruit to sell just to push us up to the round number of 290,000 bells invested in turnips. This is absolutely insane how much money we have on the line right now. Day 45, we hit the money rock. We have to do something about this hair. I'm starting to feel like I'm the elf on the shelf. Okay, you know what? Let's try something different. I did go get my shoes shined and I went to the marquee to get a new emote, but after getting my haircut done, uh, I feel like I got a mix of the first two haircuts I got put together. Man. One day, I'll have enough to shop here at Gracie Grace. I decided to go inside the store, and I got harassed for not wearing a hat or accessories. I also found this mysterious door back here in the city. I guess this is where Red is, but I don't have an invite, so... I can't go in right now. Oh yeah, it's Monday. We forgot to check what the turnip prices are. Turnips are kind of usually bad on Monday, so I didn't really care to check, but... Yeah, the turnip prices aren't good today. Everything is coming to a head at day 46. We go and check the turnip prices and there are 132 bells a turnip. This is so tempting. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Last time we waited and it paid off. It's only Tuesday, but if it bombs, I don't know. We gotta go big or go home. Uh, don't sell, don't sell, don't sell. I instead bought some clothes to try to calm myself down. Also, now that I think about it, did I forget to water my turnip? Where is it? Oh. 
I actually forgot to plant it when we bought it on Sunday. Well, I guess I'll have to harvest it a little bit late next week to make sure that I get the full 16,000 bells. It's not the end of the world, at least we only forgot to plant it and not water it. Day 47, am I having not selling seller's remorse? I don't know if I should have sold yesterday. I was walking around and I saw this flying balloon that I shot down and I got a cannon from it. What does that mean? I also did find the money rock and today Nook actually has some awesome stuff for sale. Uh, I'm probably gonna pay a pretty penny for these. The turnip prices have dropped. They're down to 127, which is still in the green, but uh oh, maybe I should have sold yesterday. Um, also, I went back to my house and I'm kind of really running out of room. This cannon that I got though out of the balloon is really cool. I did not expect that. Day 48, I was walking around and I found another one of those mysterious lamps. Okay, what do I do with this? Do, do, do I wait? Oh no. Nook is closing tomorrow again for an upgrade. This means another single day removed from our chances of selling and that's a terrifying thought. But once again, we won't be able to see if the price goes way up on this day, meaning we have even less time to sell before these turnips spoil. Today the turnip price has dropped all the way down to 85 bells. That's not great. I don't want to sell right now because we will still have a day at the end where we could sell, but we're gonna have to try to make some money and some extra money to be prepared for any losses we might end up since our entire financial portfolio is on the line. So a few hours later, like in the middle of the night, I decided to get back on to see if maybe, maybe that lamp will finally do something. And I ran around a bit. I scared this giant moth off and then I scared off some more moths. I'm really not doing too good with this. What is happening right now? Someone is talking to me? Is this because of the lamp? Finally, it's Wisp. Well, at the very least, we made the right call getting on this late. Now I want him to give me bells. Okay, apparently he's scared to look for his lost lamp because of ghosts at night. All right. He said he'll grant me one of three wishes, but only if I meet him in my attic of all places. So I headed to my attic and sure enough, he gave me three options to choose from. Uh, whoa, whoa, I'm not looking to get arrested here. This game came out in 2008. Okay, I'm guessing he maybe means he will weed my town, but I need money. Give me stuff. I guess furniture is probably worth the most out of everything here. I asked him and he gave me a hibachi. I feel like I just got scammed. Well, day 49, the store was closed. So we're just gonna have to get the money rock and water a turn up. Who are you, Harry? No, why did this guy have to move to our town after we horrifyingly saw him in the city? Well, I guess we'll find out tomorrow if we're gonna be facing full on bankruptcy or have a stroke of good luck. I'm not looking forward to this. <sighs> Day 50, Saturday. I have to sell. I absolutely hate this and I have no choice in the matter here. I do have to say Nook's new store is really fancy. I mean, look how big this new story is being added to it. Without any options, we can see that the price here isn't as high as it once was, but it's still at the very least a small profit overall. So we're not fully losing everything. Actually, now that I think about it, what time is it? Wait, it's 11.55 at the time of me talking to Tom Nook here. If I remember remember correctly, Tom Nook does two prices in a day, meaning that he's going to change his price potentially here at noon. This can be really bad because I want to sell and play it safe while I still can make a small profit and not lose everything that I have invested here in turnips because the price randomly tanks now. I must have picked like the worst time to get on here. That means I literally have less than five minutes to sell all the turnips I have before noon. Oh geez. Okay. I'm going to hurry, hurry, hurry. I might be able to swing one set of turnips if I'm safe and at least make a tiny profit. If I'm lucky, it's going to be really, really close. I'm picking up the turnips as fast as I can. I'm running all the way back to Tom Nook's store to sell. Since this game uses a stupid analog clock, I actually have no idea how close until I run out of time it is. Okay, I sold the one set. I'm gonna go back and try to get more, but I think I'm completely out of time. I really messed up on my timing here. And then just like that, I do hear the clock chime in the game, noting that it is now 12 noon, which means, yeah, Tom Nook is gonna have a new turn up price. That's unfortunate. But wait, Tom Nook is actually buying at 150 now after noon. That is even more. I thought typically when you get very close to the last deadline, Tom Nook's price 
price drops, but for whatever reason this week, we actually kind of lucked out and now we're gonna make a profit on everything else that we still have yet to sell. I panicked all of that time for nothing when actually I could have made even more turn up money if I didn't sell that first set. Okay, so now I can relax and sell the rest of the turn ups and ultimately after going through and selling all of them, I actually ended up walking away with 415,000 bells with the money I also had in my pocket, which is pretty decent. But now I'm faced at some crossroads. Do I put the 415,000 bells towards my house upgrade or do we do more rounds of turn up gambling? Uh. I don't know. I'm gonna wait a little bit and think about it. Okay, it's day 51. It's Sunday. It's also flea market day. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and not pay our debt down as badly as I want to just pay it off. I think it's more important that we have working capital here. And this time around, we're going all in or we're getting nothing at all. If we don't take big risks, we're not gonna ever be able to pay off all of our debt in this game. We're never gonna be able to shop at Gracie Grace's. Also, in good news that happened to my town, whoever had their house right in front of this bridge finally moved away so I can cross the bridge in peace now. Okay, I found the money rock which is good and I also found quite a few things while digging. Okay, I like this modern bed. I don't have room for this modern bed in my house but it's a part of the modern set that I've been collecting and I kind of really want it. Also, while I was at it, I bought some wallpapers and floor in case I ever do get another room added to my house. Tom Nook's store is always just selling the interesting things. Also, where is Joan by the way? I'm trying to find her for a minute. Okay, I finally did find her and she's selling at only 91 bells a turn up, which is kind of a steal. All in all, I hope that this is a good idea, putting this much money on the line. I have full pockets and I'm trying to put stuff away to free pocket space. And then out of nowhere, Harry comes in. Please leave me alone. I'm busy. I can't put away my stuff while someone is trying to buy things in my house because of the stupid flea market today. And Harry's just really annoying me. I end up leaving my house and going back in to force Harry out of the house. And then Gala shows up. Come on. I really don't have that much room in my house. And I now just spent 420,000 bells on turnips that I just have kind of laying here. I also got another red turnip, but I can't harvest the other one that I planted until Tuesday because I did plant it late. I do have to say I'm at the point where I definitely could use an upgrade to my house for the extra space. Things are getting pretty cramped here, but I'm trying to be a good sport and I'm trying to just make the money, but I really do want to upgrade my house. You know, hopefully this week goes well and we don't end up losing all of our acquired wealth in a single bad turnip price. Going on to day 52, I have low hopes because Monday usually seems to have a low turnip price. So unless it's really good, we're not going to sweat anything that happens here. I watered my red turnip. I found the money rock. Turnips are at 68 bells today, which is pretty low and lame. I did use some of the money from the money rock that I found to buy this fridge. But at this point, my house is starting to look like a hoarder's house. On day 53, I did manage to dig up that red turnip and I dug up the correct one after debating which one was the one I was supposed to dig up. That of course sells for 16,000 bells, which are pretty nice. Turnip prices are still pretty low priced for today as it's Tuesday. I did find a flying present, which was cool. I shot that down and I got a backpack. Oh look, it's Pascal again. He gives us some more random advice and then just leaves. I decided to go and take the backpack into my house to see what that looked like and it's a pretty big backpack, but that's about it. Day 54, I found the money rock. I sold a fossil. Turnip price still hasn't gone up yet. Hmm. I'm trying not to get nervous. I uh, maybe impulse bought this modern lamp, but otherwise I'm trying to keep a cool head. Day 55, I got the money rock again, did the regular routine I do. 132 bells per turn up is a pretty safe number. It's not necessarily a risky number. And I am tempted to hold out to see if the price spikes again. Since I did buy so low though, I wonder if it's better to play it safe and take this guaranteed profit. I am a fan of taking risks, but I think getting a 142% return on the original isn't that bad of a return. So I think we're going to go ahead and just sell everything we have and make sure that we're being smart with our money, especially when our entire wealth is on the line. Man, also selling this many turnips takes a minute to have to run back and forth, filling my pockets over and over again. Wait a second. What is that? I just dropped my net to make room for the turnips and I saw something. I, I'm going to go back and get my net. Now I don't see it. I do see this balloon flying overhead though, so I want to make sure I went and shot that down. There it is. Is that a tarantula? Okay. 
careful. Careful. I caught it. Oh my gosh. I actually didn't even know tarantulas were in this game originally. And now here we go. Look, tarantulas. I get 8,000 bells for selling that. So that's pretty good. Also in that present I shot down, I got a flagpole and I wonder if it's a Mario themed item. Okay. So after selling all of the turnips, plus the money that we made over this week, we now have 620,000 bells off of our initial 420,000 bells we started with on Sunday that we invested into turnips. I think with this much money, we should go ahead and just pay off the house because it's not even going to be our entire money that we have now. At this point, I was planning on saving until I had enough to pay off all of the debts we could ever have in the future, but we really do need room in the house. So taking a little bit of our wealth out to go ahead and have the bigger space I do think is worth it. Plus, if we do pay it off now, we will have a couple of days left to try to make up some more money and maybe get our bells up to a little bit of a closer number to what we originally are at today. That way, when Joan comes around, we're putting a ton of wealth forward in turnips once again to gamble it all away again. So, I decided to go and pay everything off now, finishing off this debt that we've been sitting on for quite some time, but we're now back down to 430,000 bells, which is still more bells than what we started with in our investment on Sunday. So paying off the house just because of a one turnip flip isn't that bad of an exchange. I do wonder if in the following days we hit the money rock and we get our red turnip sold, maybe we can be back up to 500,000 bells by Sunday and we will put the most bells into the turnip game we have ever put in the entire history of these 100 day videos by putting half a million bells on the line in the turnip market. Nonetheless, I checked in with Nook after the payment and he is going to expand my house and we'll have a new floor, which is pretty cool to have an upstairs area we can decorate as well. Day 56. My house is so tall now. I spent quite a bit of time decorating the upstairs and it's kind of looking snazzy. I don't know what's going on down here now though. The downstairs is maybe a little bit of a mess. I went outside. I got a money rock, which was good. Tom Nook's like, hey, you know that renovation only 368,000 bells you know that's a lot we do actually have enough to pay it all off if we wanted to but we want to save this money and use it as working capital for the turnip game because maybe we can make even more progress with what we do have if we can win and profit just a little bit more we can just pull out and have the money secured to pay off almost all of our debt. Out of curiosity, I did check to see what the turnip price would have been today, and it would have been a little bit higher at 157 bells per turnip, but that's okay. Honestly, we profited as much as we did, and we can't min and max every single turnip flip without knowing ahead of time what the turnip prices are gonna be. And I think that's like some inside trading, which is illegal. Going into day 57, it's the day before turnips, and we'll just go ahead and go for good old reliable money rock. We did dig a bunch of stuff up, which was really nice, and we got our fossils checked. I caught a a saw stag beetle, which was awesome. This helped me make a little bit of money for the day. I then headed in the city to try to get a fresh haircut before the next turnip grind. Also, have you ever wondered how this bus works when we're in like an enclosed city? Like there's no roads leading out of here. Oh well. What on earth is this now? I really can't catch a break with these haircuts. I feel like I keep ending up with a mullet in one way or another. Also, while I was walking around the city, the music tonight sounds really eerie. <laughs> I don't know why, almost like something bad is going to happen. Nonetheless, I wrapped up that day and got ready for the next day. All right, day 58. High risk, high reward, right? After we sell our red turnip and get the money rock, we're gonna be investing more than ever in turnips. We have a little time before Joan leaves, so let's fish and bug hunt and make a little more money so we can maximize our investment. There's actually a lot of cicadas out and they sell for a few hundred bells each, which is better than filling pockets with pears. I had a run in with some bees and then I found some more bees and got stung again. I I made some money selling stuff and then I got stung by some more bees again. I caught a bird wing butterfly. Okay, that's actually not too bad. After selling that, we have some money and we are gonna go ahead and invest just under half a million bells in turnips. And we're buying at 98 bells per turnip, which isn't too bad. Hey, also, can you not stand in my turnip garden, please? I'm trying to make a million bells. Day 59, there wasn't too much going on. I got my money rock, watered my red turnip, and there was a low turnip price as expected. Day 60, I don't know what this is, but it keeps happening. I feel like I run into my villagers secretly standing completely still in the open and only when they see me they quickly act like they were moving and not just creepily standing there i don't know what's going on here money rock time okay turnip prices are 98 which is just to break even so we're not gonna sell but man what is going on okay we're getting down to the wire we need to sell soon with our whole debt on the line it's more stressful than ever day 61 i caught a beetle i did my money rock stuff and 175 bells per turnip what this is 
actually great. I mean, we have our work cut out for us running back and forth to sell all of these turnips, but this could be it. This could be the end all of our turnip grind finally after 61 days of trying to make profit. I start running back and forth selling things and I run into Pete who's just slacking around randomly not delivering mail. I have no idea what that's all about. Okay, so we went from investing 490,000 bells, making a little bit of money rock and other things throughout the couple of days, and then selling everything we have, making a total of 910,000 bells. This is incredible. Tomorrow, we need to go to the bank and we have to figure out our debt situation. I don't know if we want to pay everything else off at once. I don't know if we should gamble anymore. I'm leaning towards no, but I think if we just sleep on it, think about it. I want to say we've finished the turn up game finally, which is so nice to be able to say, but we'll figure it all out later and see what's going on. Day 62. I caught a gar? Cool. Okay, the money rock method is still going strong here. We are carrying too much money in our pockets though to carry much more money, so we do need to decide if we're gonna spend this. I decided it's good to go ahead and pay off that debt that we have. I picked up the money I left behind from the rock and then went to go talk to Nook. Nook is now all motivated to go ahead and build us a basement, so we'll go ahead and go through with it, and I think this might be one of our last upgrades, but I wonder how much this is gonna cost. Day 63. Guys, look at this creepy dungeon basement I now have. That's great. Money rock again. Old habits die hard, but hey, it's a little bit of money right here. And uh, wow, Tom Nook wants a lot for that basement he just dug out. Almost 600,000 bells, but this is the final upgrade, so of course it's going to be the most that we will have to pay for anything. So we are kind of at crossroads here. Do we keep doing turnips, or do we just pay majority of the remaining wealth we have towards the debt? I think the best way to do this is just pay on the debt and be free finally to live out a simple life in Animal Crossing and get to experience other things. When was the last time I ran an errand for one of my villagers? It's been a minute. Turnips are also incredibly stressful, so we're gonna go ahead and pay off our debt and just like that, easy come, easy go. We put all of our wealth towards the debt and we are a little bit short. We don't have enough to pay it all down yet. Uh, it's not that much. We can get that in a couple of days and then we'll finally be paid off forever. But yeah, we still have to make a tiny bit of money left. A little oversight, but it's fine. We should be okay. But then there's the real end game for Animal Crossing that we have to fulfill, which is actually doing the city folk things that we haven't done yet. Day 64 and uh oh, Pearl moved away. And I guess I really haven't been the best of neighbor. I'm not really spending too much time with any of my villagers now that I think about it. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our finances today though. We will stop and hit the money rock first. And it looks like we owe 32,000 bells, but we have 8,000 bells in our pocket. I think we can probably pay that off after we sell our red turnip tomorrow and maybe hit the money rock one more time. I think that's overall pretty impressive. I did decide just to make a little more money today though just to ensure that we finish this all tomorrow. I found three items in the recycling which was surprising. I dug some stuff up. I watched Harold fall into a hole which was pretty good. Out of the three items I got from recycling I don't think I have a fitting idea for any of them. I guess I can keep the table and sell these other two. I got some fossils evaluated and overall I made 6,000 bells for selling my stuff which isn't too bad. Okay day 65. Can we actually pay off our debt? Will we get rewarded for doing it? Oh boy. Let's dig up our turnip and find that money rock. We sold the turnip and is that enough? Okay, we'll go and check and yeah, look at that. I'm debt free and I have a little bit left over too. And we don't have to worry about turnips anymore. I'm actually free to just play Animal Crossing City Folk. How exciting is this? Now the real game can actually start after all these days played. I am curious, is there a reward for beating all of this? Like in the original Animal Crossing game, we had a huge statue made just for completing this. So I'm actually really excited to see what they chose to do for City Folk when you paid off all your debt. I talked to Nook and uh, he wants to give me a flag? What? Also, according to Nook, as far as the future and what it holds for me, he said I should start saving money or buy luxury items or invest in a town fund. Okay, I guess those are all. Still, we achieved a full debt payoff and I think we should be really proud of ourselves, all by day 65 also. So where do we go next? Well, there's actually a lot. Days 66, 67, 68, and 69, I ended up catching up on things that I hadn't done while being hyper-focused on paying off debt. Like, I checked out that weird flag I now have in front of my house. I talked to Pascal again with his random little advice. My regular day-to-day -day routine seemed to be enough to still make some money sometimes, and also I can make money without having to rely on turnips again, like doing things like catching bugs or catching fish really do help along the way. In the spirit of new financial freedom, I needed a new haircut to reflect that, and it's not too bad, I guess. I went to the marquee and I got another emotion, and I even finally decided to cave and talk to Lyle. It looks like nowadays he's the happy home guy, so okay, 
I guess you'll start judging my house now. I also got some fresh clothes finally. I got fossils evaluated, but still don't feel like donating because why should I? I even bought this kitchen, but we'll have to figure out how to decorate this house still because it's kind of a mess. Okay, day 70, I finally talked to Rold. Man, he's kind of an OG being here from the beginning of the game and I think I barely ever talked to him. Apparently it's been six weeks of playing this game every day, six weeks of just ignoring him. This poor guy has stuck through everything with us too. Also, I bought this cool clover shirt. While I was at it, just, you know, spending some of the money that I've earned in recent days, I bought a new floor just to change up the look in my house. By day 74, I had spent some time talking to villagers and even happy home letters were actually praising my house's appearance inside, saying I had good feng shui or whatever that is. I got in the habit of regularly changing up my clothes. I'm really living city folk life to the max. I also headed into the city and I had kicks clean my shoes again and he changed the color of them, which is kind of cool. I got my fortune read. I was assaulted by Katrina again and she practically told me nothing about my future. She said that fortune may or may not be on my side and that I need to remember bad times are just times that are bad. That's really some great life advice right there. On days 75 and 76, I pretty much did my regular routine. I really wanted to go and visit Red Store in the city, but I can't figure out how to get in. I need an invitation somehow. I went around talking to everyone to try to get an invitation, but to no avail. I don't know. Sometimes there's not too many people even in the city. I feel like I spend also way too much money on haircuts nowadays. And look at this. Now I look like the kid who gets his lunch money stolen at school. I do like getting kicks to shine my shoes though. I gotta support his hustle. Also, if you ever play City Folk, save yourself the trouble. Don't talk to Lyle. He just goes on and on and on and it drives me insane. On days 77 and 78, I really wanted to just take a couple of days to clean up the town and just play Animal Crossing the original way. You know, I shook some trees to get fruit. I did some good old weeding. I got bit by a mosquito and Nook was running a sale for all items half off and I uh, bought the shower. I was hoping the shower would actually have running water. Unfortunately, it doesn't. So now it just sits in my basement. Okay, day 81. Wow, we've come a long way and I fell in a hole. Okay, we gotta get some fresh clothes. We've been uh, catching a lot of cicadas lately. Summer is really great for bug catching in this game. Also, Benedict's still around. I remember he thought about moving way back when and said that he didn't think he could get out of it. I guess he didn't move after all, and he did get out of it, and I just kind of ignored him after convincing him to stay for weeks. Well, I guess that's my bad. More importantly though, who moved in and dropped their house right in front of this bridge again? <sighs> Robin. You win some, you lose some, I guess, but at least Rold has a new catchphrase. Day 83, I found out Gala moved away. I never really liked her anyways, so bye. I went to the city to try to find a secret phrase for Red, and no luck, but I did get a bubble wand from Phineas, so today ended up being a good day. Once again, I've been trying to roll my luck to get a good haircut, and it never seems to go very well. Uh, I just haven't gotten this haircut thing down, have I? I decided to make day 83 my tree shaking day. I ran around and just shook all the trees. I found some bells. I actually caught bees for the first time. Then there was a second set of bees and I got stung. I found furniture and a sky balloon. I made like 1200 bells just from the little money that falls out of trees. And by the end of my play session, I ended up making about 5000 bells and all of the stuff I picked up, which isn't that bad. Okay, day 86 was a really big deal. I'm just chilling, doing my daily routines and bam, Robin and I strike up a conversation and she asks me if I know about Red's shop. Well, of course I don't. How could I? Just like that, she tells me she's gonna hook me up with an invitation in the mail so I can go and visit Red's shop. Let's go, we have our in. Day 87, we actually get the letter in the mail and it's just Robin being like, hey, you can go now. And she also told me to bring 3,000 bells for initiation, which just makes me feel like this whole thing's a scam and Robin's a part of it, but I'll let that slide. So I go, I make my way to the city, I knock on the door, I'm let in, and after just a small 3,000 bell transaction, I am now officially a cousin of Red. And there's really nothing I wanna buy here today. I explored a little bit more and it turns out there's a sale at Gracie Grace's. After all of this playtime, this is my big chance. I I actually can't believe it. There's actually a surprising amount of things that are sold out, but hey, I'm here. I bought this Groove shirt for 3,000 bells with the 50% off, which is great. This couch, normally over 100,000 bells. I got it for 55,000 bells, which is a really great deal. And, you know, now I'll have this bougie item inside of my house. I did want this rug, but I was out of bells, so I ended up buying this robe 
instead. Okay, day 88, not too much to talk about, but it was a very productive day. I think I spent a long time just moving throughout my house, moving furniture and tidying things up, just trying to pull this whole place together. You know, I'm trying to turn this hoarder's house into a hoarder's home. On day 90, I went over to Tom Nook's store and I looked at the little points system because every time I've looked, there's never been anything on there. And for once, there's an item on there I can order. It's this banana, but hey, it's something and it's 700 points and I have enough for it. So I guess I'll end up ordering it. Also, I ended up buying a lot of furniture at Nook's store because now that we've tidied up our house, I have room to add more furniture to it. I even went to the city just to see what was going on over there and Red was selling this cool safe and I thought maybe I could squeeze that into my house in one way or another. So I ended up buying that. I got another haircut and uh, I got the, you just got a haircut look now. So great. I did go to check out Gracie's store and it looks like she has all new items for sale. I actually never knew that this stuff cycled out. So I uh, did buy some more clothing. I bought these amazing sunglasses and this hat. And then I decided to throw on that bathrobe I bought a couple days earlier. And now look at me. I am looking so very wealthy. It's always a sombering experience when you realize you're at the end of a run. As day 92 begins, I stick with the regular routine, hitting the money rock and whatnot. I bought a computer and a stereo, and then I spent a little bit of time making room for them in my house and, you know, trying to make this whole thing look good. While I was out and about though, I ran into Tortimer and he actually said that tonight is the firework show. Oh shoot, I kind of want to actually see that. Also while I was out, I decided to finally take a look at that town fund that Tom Nook talked about and apparently they just want money no questions asked no answers given so I didn't think that was very cool I think that's a big scam the fireworks show that night though was pretty awesome even cooler is that Tortimer gave me a gift a sparkler wow how cool and then it burns out and then yeah it's a uh, pretty short-lived by day 95 I went and I had bought a ton of things at Tom Nook's store also I feel like they had some wild things for sale today as well I also made my way to the city and got my shoes shined once again I guess nothing really came from having my shoes shined on a regular basis. I was hoping Kix would get a store or something. Maybe I did something wrong here. I went over to go see what Red was doing and I bought this cool dresser for my house. And what is this art here? I can't really tell if it's fake or not, but it's not like I'm going to give it to Blathers anyways. So sure, I'll go ahead and buy it. You know, for a really long time, I felt like my house was either too crowded and then all of a sudden it was too empty, especially when I got the basement. And now I feel like it's finally coming together. Day 98 was a rather peaceful evening. I did my usual routine, but KK Slider is here since it's a Saturday night, so why not go and indulge in some music one last time this summer? I had some coffee at The Roost with Brewster, and then I listened to KK, who played two days ago. One of the songs that's maybe more melancholic than others. Just listen to this. <laughs> Doesn't this speak to you too? Now we're on day 99 and wow, we're really at the end here. I actually spent a lot of my time decorating with some of the furniture I had acquired over the last couple of days. And while obviously if I was to play this game indefinitely, my house would be a lot more full and there'd be a lot more, but ultimately I'm pretty proud of how this all turned out. It's clean, it has a lot of different items incorporated into it, but then sections of things that go really well together and then a little bit of quirkiness while we're at it as well. Yeah, I kind of dig what ended up happening here. And then finally we reach the end day 100 and you know what it's always a bittersweet moment knowing that you're at the end of a time when you move on from a game you really enjoy and I had a lot of great memories playing through Animal Crossing City Folk nowadays City Folk kind of has a reputation being one of the more unpopular Animal Crossing games and I'm pleasantly surprised with how this playthrough actually ended up feeling through and through while I always am nostalgic towards Wild World because I had it on my DS when I was a kid and the original GameCube one as well and then City Folk didn't come out until I was like 13. I think coming back and playing City Folk was more enjoyable than coming back and playing Wild World. The games are very, very similar. They share a lot of DNA, but I felt like for replay value here and nostalgia set aside, City Folk was special in its own way and the whole city integration really did diversify what I did each day. Now at this point, usually on day 100s and these types of runs, I pass my town on to my wife, who is newer to the Animal Crossing franchise 
franchise but fell in love with New Horizons and let her experience these older games. But this time we're doing something different. I think for a long time, a lot of you guys who watch these videos and myself included have had our eyes set on a different project that one day would come. And I think I would much rather start the planning stages for the 100 days we'll look at next. Animal Crossing, New Leaf. But nonetheless, I decided to take the bus to the city one final time. And you know what? Let's go ahead and get a haircut and just see what happens. Okay, you know what? This is kind of a win here. Thanks so much everyone for watching this. Shout out to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. You know, I'm a smaller YouTube channel. I just recently only hit 40,000 subscribers and it's just now getting to a year of uploading Animal Crossing content here. So huge thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Make sure you guys are keeping your internet protected and sign up with our link down below. And of course, if you're new, make sure you're subscribed and maybe check out the 100 days we did on the GameCube version of Animal Crossing or the DS version of Animal Crossing Wild World. They all played out very differently than this one, so I think it's worth checking out. That's it for today, though. We'll see you all next time with another new video.